first glance, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between a film and a photograph. To prove this point, I'm gonna show you one of each and let you decide. <laughs> I figure it's pretty easy to tell that this is the photo, and the clip from Star Wars is a film. But what is this? In order to classify these works, it is important to determine a definition. Dictionary.com defines photography as a picture produced by photography. This definition is pretty surface level and frankly confusing as it uses the word photography to define what photography is. So let's find a better, more specific definition. The famous French theorist Roland Barthes defines photography through a series of specific criteria. According to Barthes, a photograph has to be a unique experience, something that has been or is past tense, there's no evidence of its creation, it can never be exactly recreated, and it's about the moment. It simply is what it is. A photograph isn't a representation of a moment. It is the moment. But this made me think, would a documentary film fit this definition? The screaming eagles are under fire. The enemy has come to silence the guns. Communist fire comes from everywhere. This fits everything Barth describes as a photograph, right? It's a unique experience. It's about something that has been and is in the past tense. It can never be exactly recreated. And it is about the moment. However, it fails to meet one important criteria. It has evidence of its creation. With a film, it's showing you the story through its edit. With a photo, you don't see the photo being taken. Every time the film cuts, it physically shows us that this is a film that has been edited. And the fact that there is a start and a finish shows that this moment has a beginning and an end and that can be experienced by the viewer. With the photograph, the moment lives on indefinitely, frozen in time. Therefore, documentaries are not considered photography, according to Barth's definition. This seems obvious, but are there examples that are more ambiguous? Many would consider movement, or the lack of movement, to be a defining part of photography. However, we frequently see photographs that allude to movement in films that are quite static. Additionally, neither Dictionary.com nor Roland Barthes discuss the necessity of stillness in a photograph. Let's take a look at a photograph by American photographer Gregory Crudson. This image from his series titled Beneath the Roses. Crudson creates a powerful image that gives a strong sense of isolation and hopelessness. He does this by alluding to the movement and events that preceded this particular moment. To do this, Crudson actually hired entire film crews to light the set and create a scene more similar to a film set than a photograph. On the other hand, we often see films that are more static and photographic in their nature, as seen in this example from Jacques Tati's 1967 film, Playtime. This film is known for its incredibly drawn out scenes that use a static, non-moving camera that emphasizes on the space and seemingly allows the characters to move freely throughout the frame, unhindered by composition, camera movement, or cuts. Now let's look at an example that draws from both of these past examples. Brandon Seminook's mountain bike film, Gallery, takes a unique jab at blurring the line between being a film and a photograph. This project, as derived from its title, is attempting to represent a compilation of videos and present them as a series of photographs in a gallery. It does this by showing an emphasis of movement within a static image, but also the stillness of a moving image. Through its photographic compositions, static cameras, matted framing, and projected on a wall at the end, it seems to be more closely related to a photography than a film. But does Gallery achieve its goal of being a photograph? In my opinion, no. While it is still incredible and really unique, it does not fit the definition of a photograph as defined by Barth for the same reason as a documentary fails to fit this definition. It has cuts and has a start and finish. This inspired me to push this idea further and try to meet all of Barth's qualifications for a photograph. It made me ask the question, is it possible to create a body of work that uses elements from both film and photography to create a photographic series that contains movement but is still considered a photograph? 
To do this, I created a triptych that showcases three images, each of which has a static frame. Like Tati's Playtime, each frame focuses on the space and the character is allowed to move freely throughout and beyond the frame. Each frame has moments where the subject is moving throughout the frame and also moments when there's absolutely no movement at all. There are also moments when none of the frames have any movement. The frames are all on a 50 minute loop and it is not intended to be watched from start to finish. It is meant to be shown in a gallery space or hung on a wall, like a series of photographs, and the spectator comes into the scene at whatever moment the series is at. But does it fit Barth's classifications for a photograph? It's a unique experience. This is about something that has been and is in the past tense. This film never has any cuts and it doesn't start or finish as it's on a loop. And it can never be exactly recreated as this moment has already happened and will never happen again. And it is about the moment. It simply is what it is. The series isn't defined by how it was made. It is defined by what it is. This is purely a day in a life of a person. It's an ambiguous day that's already happened and is happening forever and never finishes. We are stuck in the moment with this character. Like in the example from Gregory Crudson, when the subject of the photo is stuck in this moment in front of the car, in this series, we are stuck with this character in this day that is going on forever. We don't see what happens before, we don't see what happens after, and it never ends. I left a link to a longer version of this project in the description below so you can see better how this project functions. However, this project is not intended to be viewed on a computer or a phone on the internet. It is intended to have each frame on a screen that is matted, framed, and placed on a wall in a gallery space on an indefinite loop. Now I'm going to leave it up to you, the viewer, to tell me what your thoughts are on this project. By scanning this QR code or by following the link in the description, it will take you to a short survey where you can give me your opinions on how to classify this project. Can a photograph contain movement? Let me know in the survey, and thank you for your time.